You're listening to the Higher Calling Podcast, your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. I'm Pete Newsom, and joined once again by Ricky Baez. Ricky, Happy New Year. It's 2023. How are you, man? I'm doing great. First Friday of the new year. First Friday. It's it's a beautiful day, and uh, the jobs report just came out, and we are um, we're looking good. We're looking good. 223,000 new jobs. Unemployment is at three and a half percent. It's a good time in the labor market, don't you think? I think so. I I I I think it's a great time in the labor market right now. Um, I know there's some people who might think otherwise. Salesforce right? employees That's today right. and and think otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. Ten percent who were laid off. Well, if the job market is as good as what the numbers say it is, they shouldn't have any problem finding something else and still have their severance. So, so that's we'll so see. that's an interesting question, right? Because um, I guess we're just getting into this today. No, no, uh, no, no fanfare. <laughs> but the um, you know all these all these company employees have been laid off from large tech companies. we probably had it pretty good. You know, well, uh, did you see the? Um, the video that went around of a day in the life of a Twitter employee oh about God, a month yes. ago. Yes. Th there was a LinkedIn one that went around and LinkedIn seems to be doing okay. I don't think they've allowed, announced any layoffs, but this Twitter employee <laughs> went through their day and she didn't seem to work at all. All right. And meetings, Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. There was <laughs> meetings at one point. <laughs> yeah. Right? right. Who knows what those were about? Maybe, <laughs> maybe where they were going, you know, um, later on at night, later on. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, up on the roof and, and just, it was, it was, it looked like, it looked like a, a spa day. Yeah. And, you know, and I know from my past life that in, in current, you know, today and who we recruit would these folks make a lot of money um, at these tech companies. They're flying pretty high. So I don't think it's as easy as just finding a new, a new opportunity that's um, consistent. There's been some, some significant layoffs. So it's a bit of a, um, of a contrast, right? You have the jobs reports that keep coming out um, looking great. American companies are creating jobs at, at, at a significant rate, continue to beat expectations. I think you know, something like eight months in a row, maybe, yeah. maybe even nine, I think that um, they beat the forecast in terms of new jobs created. Unemployment remains at historical lows. How do you, how do you reconcile that? And then yet all these companies are having layoffs and we know what's going on with inflation. We know that there's some bad signs in the market, but um, to me, it just, it doesn't, you know, these things don't seem aligned. They don't, Pete, and and I think this is the second time we've talked about it because it was it's just a little bit of confusing. Now I get it. The numbers, the uh, the job numbers that came out, it is all jobs in the United States. Whereas what we're seeing right now is the layoffs is kind of like on the tech side, the Silicon Valley side. Um, it, it's so I know that's that's a smaller piece of the pie than what the job numbers represent. Um, so I guess what I'm what what. What I'm saying is I would like to know why those positions are open. Like, I'm sorry, those job creation numbers, where are they coming from? What what part is because somebody left because they went to be a, a 1099 employee or they got fired, whatever the case may be. I would like to see how that breaks down. But nonetheless, low unemployment numbers is a headache for HR managers. It's great for the economy. And the opposite is also true there, Pete. Uh, obviously, because when unemployment is high, it's an HR manager's dream because you get to fill requisitions quickly, but it's just bad for the economy. So I'm a little bit biased from an HR point of view. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, it's, it's also, <laughs> you know, what we've seen, uh, we saw some, uh, you know, what I you know, deemed to be unnatural hiring yeah. um, a year ago. It, uh, in, in really a year to 18 months ago, we were seeing companies paying you know, drastically uh, bigger salaries for recruiters in particular uh, because the demand was so high for, for employees. So even though unemployment is low, I don't think the market is, is I don't think the demand for employees is anywhere near what it was. And, and, and I say that because so many corporate recruiters have been laid off. I mean, my LinkedIn timeline is flooded with, yeah. with corporate recruiters who've been cut. So I, I don't, I, I suspect, and we've touched on this already that the tech companies are number one at following uh, Twitter's lead. So Elon came through and let, uh, cut a bunch of companies, uh, employees, uh, jobs that he deemed unnecessary. 
He made a big deal about that. It was very public. And I think companies are latching onto that and probably also right-sizing a little bit. I mean, I was part of the, um, I was in IT in the mid nineties when companies were spending money left and right. It was crazy. And then, and then, you know, kind of the rug was pulled out from under all that when the, um, you know, the, uh, the bubble burst. And I, I think it's a little bit of that right now. There was a lot of fluff, yeah. right? I mean, a lot of fluff in those tech companies. Well, there is. And, and what, what, what Elon did, I mean, as of right now, as of today, this first Friday of 2023, um, it's what he did. It's, it's proven to be true. The organization obviously for years have been, have, have been running extremely inefficient. Look how many people, how many jobs were, were eliminated and the company's still going. Now I'm saying that now, not knowing how many employees at Twitter are burnt out right now or are, are on the verge of, of burning out. We still don't know what that's going to look like later on. Um, but you're right. It's uh, last year. We saw the exact opposite. We saw the offers kind of going more than what we were we were accustomed to to seeing and you called it on this show we had, you and i were having the same conversation last year how the pendulum was going to swing yes. hard the other yeah. way and here it is right now we're seeing it right now so um now let's that's see a how great, far that's a great it way takes. to put it right yeah. the pendulum is is swung back um and what was unnatural it ha has to has to settle yep and it has settled i feel um it's a, I, I saw a post uh, a couple of days ago. It was um, a, I don't know where it came from, but it was a, a, a recruiting opening. And I don't even know if it was a name brand company or, or not, but the number of applicants was shockingly high. Um, but again, my, my timeline now, of course, I live in this world, know a lot of recruiters. Uh, so it's no surprise that, that I see uh, these folks who were looking, but um Man, there's been a lot of people who who've changed jobs multiple times, yeah. uh, trying to st remain employed in, in that world because we just, we just, we just grew too 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 much too soon, right? I think. Yeah, yeah, and and, and but you know, it's uh, we'll see, we'll see because I. I firmly believe that the people who get laid off, who were not expecting to be laid off, maybe this is, this was their moment. I will, I want to see how many businesses, how many startups come out of this. Because remember, this might be the sign somebody who was working at Salesforce or Amazon needed to actually kick open their idea that they've been sitting on for the past five, 10 years. So I, I have seen some situations, some startups that have come up because 10 years ago they, they were laid off because something happened to them when the bubble burst back in the uh, early 2000s. So um, I know it's easy for me to say that as somebody who, quote unquote, has not been affected by that. But from the outside looking in, I'm excited to what kind of innovation we're going to see later on or what kind of fresh ideas um, these displaced employees are going to provide to other organizations. So I'm excited. So so that's a, that. that's a, the perfect segue into the question that we were asked, uh, that we wanted to talk about today. Did you do that on purpose, Ricky? I did not. I did, did not. I'm did just not. going with the flow of conversation there, Pete. Well, very natural of you. Uh, <laughs> innovation is, is absolutely necessary, uh, relative to this question that we were asked, mm -hmm. which is, um, someone wrote in and said, I'm worried that chat GPT is uh, going to eliminate jobs, including mine. Help, what can I do? Uh, so <laughs> step back for a moment. Let's talk about what ChatGPT is. I know we've we've discussed it briefly in the past, but it. Um, I'll let you describe it. You're you're uh, you're a big fan. You you think it's um, you know, this is a huge huge deal. It is a, it is a big deal. I, I wrote a blog uh, just kind of for fun the day I saw that it came out about a month ago now um, and, and interviewed it about recruiting. Mm -hmm. And um, let's, my, my finding was that it was, uh, uh, it was incredible. I mean, it is incredible. There's no question about it, but um, I'm not worried. It's going to take the jobs of recruiters quite yet, but what, what, why don't you describe what chat GPT is? You'll do a better job. Than I, me. I, I will describe it how, well, first of all, let me tell you how I found out about it. All right. It was actually your blog. Okay. Um, that that blog came out and I, you know, cause I'm, I've always been fascinated with AI. And when that blog came out and you're interviewing this chat GTP thing or GPT thing, and I'm like, what? And I, 
I I read the article and I'm like, I I, I put that aside because I've never heard of it. I'm like, that's interesting. So I put it aside and I'll access it later. I was having some conversations with some people later on um, and that same conversation came up and I'm like, oh yeah, Pete did an article on that. Then I took a deep dive. Let me tell you folks, the power of this thing, it, it, it's, I don't think people yet realize. So let me give you an example. When you were in school or when, when any of us was doing any kind of a, of a, of a research assignment, whether it's high school or college, we either, depending how old you are, had to go to the library you know, check out some books and write some information down. Or if you're, you know, Gen Xer or, uh, or, or younger, you've, you've Googled it, right? You Google some information, you grab the information and based on the information you've aggregated from Google, you create a, your own thoughts, your own essay based on what you found. What chat GPT is, it does that for you. So it does all the research. I don't, I don't, I don't want to say it does all the research, but if you ask it to get, explain something to you, it'll explain it to you in such a way that you don't think a computer program regurgitated this information. You think there was another human being on the other side who put this together. And so it's, to an, me, it's an artificial intelligence scary. chatbot. Yes, right? that's, it's scary to me. That's what it is, and, <laughs> yeah. it, and it's... Um, it's built on you know uh, what's called large language models, and it and it learns as it goes, and it is a it is a big evolutionary step in, um, in AI is because it, it 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 to your point it appears that you're communicating with with a human right the way it comes across. I mean, it's much more advanced than anything I've seen. I, I mean, I yeah. don't. I think it's probably existed in certain areas that you know that just wasn't available to the public to the masses and now it is it's been and it's being offered for free currently you know for for anyone who wants to use it so it uh it 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 it's a big evolutionary step like i yeah. said so what what it what the risk is of course is that you know it's going to replace jobs Right. Um, that, uh, you know, content writing in particular is in content creation. That's an area that um, chat GPT uh, does well in. But I, I don't you know what I found when I was asking questions about recruiting, of which I have, you know, um, a significant depth of knowledge. Mm -hmm. I found it to offer very good surface level responses, but it lacked nuance and, and, and some of the depth that, that I would you know, think would be necessary ultimately, but it's probably going to evolve and, and, and continue um, to, to learn and improve. And that's, yeah, that's, you, you can see that it will eliminate a lot of jobs. Right. So, I mean, that's my initial take is, yep. That's going to happen. Um, it, this thing is going to to eliminate need for a lot of jobs, but as we've talked about before, I is that a bad thing? I think it will eliminate jobs for the jobs and or the people who are performing those jobs who refuse to evolve. Because right now, this is the the early stages of this. And yes, you are correct. It's It hits on some really good points in the responses, but you, it still needs some of the human touch to make it seem a little bit more human, right? So you still need to massage it a little bit. But as it learns, that, that margin of error is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So I think what people should be doing right now is the people who who are afraid like the like this a uh, person who sent this in that something like this is going to replace them instead of thinking about that because it, that could be a possibility but let's get ahead of it let's take a deep dive into what this is how you can become the expert learn as much about this as you can and use it as a tool to provide the services you already do don't make it your enemy make it your ally so learn as much as you can about it instead of being afraid of it i mean that's my take on it what um, you mentioned before we started recording that you, you were concerned about ethics as it relates to this, right? Yes. So if you're the student who is, or, or an employee who has to create work, right? Mm -hmm. That you're being paid for and now the work can effectively be created for you. Um, is there an ethical dilemma there? 
uh, or is that is that a um, you know is that a problem if someone wants to uh, to <laughs> to just type in the you know a sentence or two have all yeah. the work created for them that someone is either grading you to do on your own or or paying you to do on your own what what's your take on that so or look, are these different a, or, I mean do you need to separate well a they could be the same a, they a could worker. be different so as a professor am I worried from an ethical perspective I'm on the fence on that because I don't know. I, I I can't definitively say where the line is of unethical and ethical behavior, right? Because you know, right now, if somebody puts this in, you know, if if somebody writes an essay assisted totally from chat GPT, I again I don't know how unethical that is because they've put in specific information that they came up with and the machine shot something back out. That to me, that is just that is a lot more advanced and evolved than going on Grammarly. You and I talked about that. Or maybe if I spell something wrong and I look it up in a dictionary before Windows 95 or Windows 90, whatever, and now it tells you. So at what point is the ethical dilemma in the conversation? And I don't know. I'm well, on the fence know, it, on that. I think it depends on what the objective of the assignment is right so if you are a math student and you are supposed to learn formulas that will allow you to comprehend um how to reach an answer but there are times where you shouldn't use a calculator because it would it would cut the corner so mm -hmm. to speak right you wouldn't have to know the formula you just have to know how to use the calculator but on as math advances and you know, it's almost like you don't need to learn that formula anymore, right? The formula is now known. And if you understand, if you comprehend, um, you know, the bigger picture with it, you know, then, then there's a need to use a calculator, right. To, to advance. I mean, it's, it, and so I, I guess what I worry about is just from the student perspective. Well, if you don't, I mean, <laughs> You, you I still need to example. learn some basics, right? Grammar being one, because how do you know if it's wrong? If you don't understand, um, you know, if you don't have the basic grammar skills and, but you could also make a case, right? And, and I know this is what we've talked about in the past. Like, <laughs> I don't know how to fix my car, right? But I don't need to know how to fix, I don't know how to grow my own food. I mean, fundamentally, I, I mean, like theoretically I do, mm -hmm. but I, I don't actually know how to do it. But I don't, I'm never going to have to. So my time is better spent doing other things because we have a division of labor. And so mm -hmm. this further divides labor and what needs to be done. So humans don't have to spend time researching. I mean, because, if, you know, going to a lot, you have, I mean, you know, a student going to a library and, and digging through volumes of, of books and, and journals. I mean, I guess you, you could argue that there's, you know, there's work ethic that uh, that they learn through that and they their 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 way of thinking and processing things evolves but um does that really serve them well right could their time be better spent doing something else so hearing you say that i mean it, it's it, i got a great example for you right but it, it's let me address what you just said because it, it's this is the part a lot of people are missing maybe the ethical dilemma that we're applying or I'm thinking about applying to this now is outdated, right? It may have been a dilemma 10, 20 years ago, but not today because the need for me to learn things is not necessary because now, I mean, I don't have to hike anywhere. I don't have to um, be a long distance runner. I have a car, right? So I, I no longer have other than for health reasons, right? Um, I don't need to, to, um, to run long distance. But I guess what I'm saying is for something like this, um, right now, the only ethical dilemma I see, I would see, is if, um, for example, um, your freshman year in college, your very first class you take is English Comp 101, right? The whole point is for you to learn how to, how to you know, it's a word composition, grammar, spelling, things like that. Yeah, I, I, I guess if you use Word or Grammarly for that, it's highly unethical. Because the point of that is for you to learn all those things that you're getting from something else. Whereas in your master's class, 
I'm asking about unions and write a position on unions, your position on it. You have to be able to compose some kind of an argument that's grammatically incorrect and where you can use word for that or other out, outside things. And it will be an ethical dilemma because I'm not checking you for that. I'm checking you for your comprehension of unions. I hope that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Well, it does. It, it all depends on what the objective is, but you could, can you fast forward to a point of in society or human evolution where you say, there's no reason to spend time learning proper grammar because computers will do it for you. <laughs> I mean, I, I personally think that we've dumbed down speech, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know, to, to a, a pretty significant degree just in the last you know 20 years where things are acceptable that, that, um, and, and just human interaction and writing and, and, and just regular conversation that, um, I would, you know, I see and think, oh, that's awful grammar. Right. But it, it, it exists and, and no one yeah. seems to, to care. Um, so I, I don't think that's making us better <laughs> as a society, but on the other hand, that's a, that's a matter of perspective. But wait, and, wait. Well, I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm going to put you in the spot. All right. Okay. Five minutes ago, you were saying that if if you don't have to worry about all these things that technology allows you not to worry about, that you could focus on other on other things. So, with Grammarly, wouldn't that be the same thing with that? Because now you're saying. I think I'm hearing the opposite now, right? Because I think now you're saying because of this technology, it's not helping us now. I'm saying communication has devolved to some degree um, if, in, in the way, because if you, if you cut out the it, it, words matter, right? Yep. There's nuance yep. to words. And, and that's consistent with what I found using the chat GPT, um, to, to ask about recruiting was that, yeah, it, it was able to answer um, things at a basic level, right? But it really did lack nuance and depth. I, I don't know a better way to put it. So if my communication, if you, if you, if you have a bigger, um, uh, you know, if you read more, right, your, your vocabulary is going to expand mm -hmm. because you encounter more words. You, you, you know, a child is limited and it's, in, in their ability to communicate because their vocabulary is not very large. So the, the broader your vocabulary, the, the, the better you communicate because you have mm -hmm. a, a bigger variety of words to draw from, right. To, to illustrate a point um, and to interact with another human. So that's really what I'm, I'm thinking of. If you, if you just cut off the need to learn that, and you all, and, and so you start to, we start to go backwards, right? Like, I, I don't think that makes us better by having less un, you know, understanding of, of, um, of vocabulary and grammar. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I think, I think that rationale could change in time. I can, I think it could change in time, but I do get what you're saying, but it, it just, it depends how real this gets. Right. So going back to the question, going back to this person who's concerned, it, 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 it's you know what, Pete, can we give people an example? Let me let, it, let me give people an example on 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 why this person is concerned. Right. Because normally if I, if you and I wanted to interview somebody, we could just, you know, sit down, figure out what kind of job this person, you know, what kind of job we're looking to fill, what kind of skills we're looking for. And we write interview. We spend some time to write some interview questions that will help us understand their skill set. Now, I, I just opened up chat.openai.com. I already have an account. And I type in write interview questions for an HR generalist. Yep. Within two seconds. Question number one, how do you stay organized and manage your workload? Number two, can you give an example of a time when you had to handle a difficult employee situation? How did you handle it? And what was the result? How do you stay up to date on changes in employment laws and HR best practices? Describe a time when you had to deal with a conflict between two employees. How did you resolve it? What was the result? These are good questions. You're being, no, right. Yeah. What's, what's interesting though, is I have to now call you out a little bit. Yeah. Is that you could type you for the last 20 years, you could have typed that in Google. 
and and receive the same questions. You can type it in Google right now and receive not only those questions, but um, dozens and dozens of more for that role. You could go to zengig.com and see mm-hmm. those questions. You can and and you and you can see those, you know, in in different places. So I don't you know, it's pulling data together that already exists somewhere else or answers that already exist somewhere else. And I think it's just in a format that when it, it when it relates, as it relates to those sort of things, it, it, it already exists. It's just putting it together in a nice package for us. So, so to me, that's, that's the evolution. That's the aha, the pulling the data that's, that's been around for decades. It's how the how the data is compiled after it's pulled that's really mind blowing. Now, right? do do the same thing. Type it mm-hmm. in and say, ask it in the tone of Dr. Seuss. Why don't you do that? Because see, to me, that's where this thing is <laughs> is amazing. Is okay. that it's so not on. just pulling information. It's it has how, the ability to it. manipulate, not manipulate, maybe manipulate, but massage it. Okay, and, here we go. Write interview questions for an HR generalist in Dr. Seuss. Is it going to work is a question. If you were a character in a Dr. Seuss book, which one would you be and why? Can you give an example of a time when you had to think left, think right, think low, think high to solve an HR problem? Okay, that's that's... <laughs> How do you stay unboring when it comes to employee engagement and retention initiatives? How do you handle trouble in the Truffleville? <laughs> what was it? Trouble in the what? <laughs> I'm sorry. This is great. How do you handle, quote unquote, trouble down in Truffleville, difficult employee situations in a way that is consistent with the values of the company? Oh, so what this is doing this is interview questions for an HR generalist in a Dr. Seuss themed company. Okay, there you go. Well, do it, do it. I mean, if you did it in, you know, you could do it as limericks. You could do it as rhymes. You could, you know, there's that's what is is crazy about. You know, okay. So back back to um, yeah. you know, back to the jobs. Is it going to eliminate jobs? Um, you know, this person who wrote us uh, didn't say what job that they're in. Um, but depending on uh, what they do then the answer may be yes. The, the, the certain jobs will no longer be necessary. They'll be automated. This has been the way um, of human evolution for since the beginning of time. And it's it may be an unsettling thing. Um, it, it may be a scary thing. It may, it may be a bad thing for some people, but for society as a whole, um, it's going to change us a, a, a lot. I think that's what we can agree on uh, for sure is it and and those who pay attention right can stay can stay on the curve if you ignore it then then that's where trouble is 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 going to come from i mean i i'm you know, paying very close attention to this now and i and am too other am other too. things like it and and here's and while while i'm hearing you say that because i'm thinking all right we we're we're lobbing easy balls over here. We're not giving this, we're not challenging this. So I'm I'm gonna make it a little bit challenging here. So now I typed in, you are a talented people manager and went to Harvard Business School. Coach me on motivating my team to success. It's thinking, it's thinking. So I did this the other day and it spit out some things. It gave me a little synopsis about what I need to be doing as a leader and, and what, what ideas, how to motivate my team. And I'm thinking, man, I could see a lot of frontline leaders using this um, on their one-on-ones to kind of help them. So, Oh, it came back. Here we go. All right. So I, again, I asked it, you are talent, you are a talented people manager and went to Harvard business school, coach me and motivated my team. Here's the, its response. Sure, here are a few tips on motivating your team to success. Number one, set clear goals. Make sure that your team knows exactly what is expected of them and how their work fits in the bigger picture. Number two, provide regular feedback. Regular check, regularly check in with team members and provide feedback on their performance. This can help them understand what they're doing well and what they need to improve. And, and it keeps going on and on and on. Pete, I got the perfect, perfect example for this. Chat GPT is the 
blank for dummies book online. That's it. That's there it. You go. Well, I think it's more That's than it. that, right? <laughs> I think oh, it, it's a simple way to say it, but yeah. But it, it it's 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 a powerful it's a powerful application, um, and it's it's we'd be crazy not to think it's it's going to improve significantly. Yeah. Um, now I, I did notice that, um, and, and I, I saw the guy who, uh, is the CEO of open AI, the company who, um, who created chat GPT, a guy named Sam Altman, I uh, mm -hmm. follow him on Twitter. He mentioned that, um, they were addressing these issues, but there, it seemed to have some political bias to it. Mm. Um, and in, in, in the early, you know, uh, the in initial, uh, version or iteration that was, that was out there. And so there were examples shared where it um, it definitely had a political slant to it, it the the answers and so what will be interesting is you know you just take something like that right and if it if it asks a question about um let's you know something that is politically sensitive or which is everything today right we know that but but yeah. but it was one question in particular that I remember seeing had to do with fossil fuels. And mm. so there are many people who say we're crazy not to use fossil fuels. The world need, needs them and, and uh, depends on fossil fuels for energy. And there's others that say, you know, fossil fuels are destroying the, um, you know, our climate and we're all going to die as a result. So there's some impassioned you know, beliefs on, on both sides. But this thing took a stance on it about, you know, the, the, the use of fossil fuels and, if there was a competing product and there will be many competing products yeah. to this and they give contrasting information, they give contradictory answers. Well, that's a, that leads to its own problem because who's right is Fox <laughs> news, right? Or is MS, MSNBC, right? Yeah. And that to me is where humans will ultimately reign, right? Mm -hmm. Because we don't, we can't rely on something to be definitive if it's, if, if it's infallible, you know, unless it's just infallible, right? Like if, if there's a chink in that armor at all, and we know that there is as of mm -hmm. right now, well, then how can I really trust it implicitly? I can't, right? So that's, it's like humans will ultimately rule the day because look, there aren't versions of truth in, in, in there, there just aren't. And we've, we've, we've kind of evolved where we, we say they are. Right. I mean, we have very public figures, elected officials who are on video and, and very blatantly, you know, and, and, and writing and there's data that indicates there's dishonesty, blatant dishonesty. And uh, the, the media will tell you that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Right. And people believe it didn't happen. And we have these opposing views. So I don't see how that like there will ever just be one thing to trump humans completely. I agree with you um, with with something like this. Uh, you know, what? Mark Cuban said it best about five years ago. Um, Mark Cuban said, I, I might massacre this. uh this quote um he says don't don't bother going to school and getting a degree right now in coding and building apps that's that's it's that that market is saturated that market is going to continue to grow and grow and grow and grow and in 10 years you're not going to need to learn how to build an app you're going to have apps that do that for you what you're going to need is an intellectual mind to know how to manage all this new information because of how quickly and how um, how technology has evolved. So he even said, you know what, liberal arts degrees are going to be more valuable in 10 years than they are right now, because in the future, again, it's, it's going to be about how the human mind artistically moves things around artistically, I said, right, move things around um, to make sure they're more efficient as a business. So it's really interesting. We're starting to see that right now. Because yeah, now, because this, this product, uh, ChatGPT, can write code as well. I don't know if you've... you've I saw that. I doubt <laughs> so, it at all, but it, it can. Well, I saw it wrote a book the other day. Did you see that? No, but I believe There's a it. book on Amazon that it obviously people had to 
you know, massage it. But it, it so I understand this concern, Pete. I understand why people would be worried. And it's good to be worried because you don't want to make the mistake Kodak, BlackBerry, and Blockbuster did. And when new ideas came up, they're like, ha, that's not ever going to happen. And now they were left behind. Jump on that train, learn about it, embrace it. You'll be okay. I think that's a great uh, way to wrap this up because we, um, Sorry for the, the for, if we're not offering better news that um, if you're afraid this may take your job, it may, and it mm-hmm. will take jobs. Things like this, uh, you know, technology like this will will absolutely take jobs it, yeah. as it has, and and that's not going to change. Um, so stay on the curve, evolve, and, uh, and 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 find ways to have it improve your life. Right? Yeah. Don't be afraid of it. Um, find ways to take advantage of it. And, and those who do will, I mean, it will ultimately be better off for it. Right. I mean, um, I, th- I think that's where we're heading, but it's going to be an interesting road. You know, I, it's like impossible to know the, the, the rapidity and the, uh, the, the, the adoption that it's going to, um, the, the, that's ahead of us with these things, but we do know that it's coming and it's uh hell it's already here. So yeah. Hold on. Write a recipe for healthy tacos. Let me see what it does there. We're going to end it with this, with a healthy taco recipe. You ready, Pete? I am. I bet it. I bet I can guess uh, what it is. Here we go. Okay, go ahead. Try to guess. A lettuce. Is it, it involve a lettuce wrap? Because. Well, one pound of lean, a g- lean ground turkey or chicken, one small onion diced, one small bell pepper diced, also minced clove garlic, one teaspoon of cumin. Chili powder, paprika, salt and pepper to taste, a small corn tortillas, topping of your choice, and detailed instructions on how to cook them. All right, corn tortillas. There we go. It, it, it there we go. Home. Taco Fridays. Taco so, Fridays. <laughs> well, happy Friday to you, Ricky. For everyone listening, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate it. Always love uh, questions. Higher calling at fourcornerresources.com. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, otherwise, drive safe and have a great rest of your day. Have an awesome weekend, folks.